55% of the overall duration. Uh, although that's oh, for us over 55% that could mean two years. Okay, and implementation could be two to three years. Or maybe more realistically, uh, uh, one of is the yeah. blue and green overlap. Well, the, I mean, the whole reason, the, the whole reason we are using Chevron because there is an overlap, okay? But the question is how much overlap you want to put, okay? And uh, a degree, we have one mega project fail because in implementation, we have the construction, the design and cons uh, the construction overlap too much. Basically, by the time we are 35% engineering only, we started construction, and that was too soon. You know, 45%, 50% engineering start construction is considered acceptable in oil and gas. But 30% uh, is too dangerous. So there is a degree of overlap. So technically, uh, uh, but again, this is what's supposed to, to show that yes, there is a sequence. There is a, some kind of an overlap. There are some major deliverables and there are some smaller deliverables throughout. There are some key gates and maybe there are some more gates, right? Because in the, if we split this into three phases, we might have three gates in here. Okay, so this is what's trying to represent what are the key elements of a life cycle from idea to closure. How you break it, how you divide it, how you spread it, that's something that has to be custom fit to the organization, type of project and culture and uh, factor as well. So this is one issue. The second, you raise a point that on front building. Actually, IPA, a company I think I mentioned earlier, independent product analysis, that does benchmarking for process industry. And the CII, which is the Construction Industry Institute. Uh, basically, in this period, they have something called uh, one of them has something called BDRI, the other one called FTL, Front Loading, uh, Front FLE, Front Loading Index, FL. Forget FLE, forget what it's called, but Front Loading Basically Index, so basically. So there is a score you create. And on a score of, for example, I think if I remember right, on uh, up to 12, the maximum of the score, unless the companies like Shell will come and tell you, unless you scored about seven or eight on your Front Loading Index, then you will not, we will not approve the project. We will tell you, you haven't done development enough, go back and do more development. So this is something you can, and this kind of the gate criteria. So as part of the gate, gate five, you should have developed this part, this is go back to what you're saying. You need to, to front load. You cannot back load, okay? You need to do front loading here because the more time you spend in proper planning and risk assessment and quality management, it actually allows you to have more efficient implementation. And that's the key where the front loading come into, and they come up with this front loading index. And PDRI stands for Project Development R Index. I can't remember what the R is. Uh, so the idea is this. Basically what that means, spend more time and energy into your front part because that's on paper, that's cheap. The second part is more expensive. And obviously it's almost hard to be perfect here, but the more you can do a good job over here, the more your execution will become perfect. So that's, uh, that's the argument. Uh, now, some people said we don't have time to plan, we, we need to go fast, and, and so on. They need to be proven, okay? This is where metrics would help, okay? And by, by putting matrices uh, or performance indicator for number of changes, number of risks, and all of this stuff, and if you can do two projects, similar project, one with proper front loading and one without, I'm willing to bet anything that one of them would show much higher uh, number of changes and risk occurring than the one that was done with proper planning. Management, they need to see, I think, on the long term, it's hard to do on one project, but on the long term, you show management two projects, similar project, one of them was done in one way, another one one day, one way, that maybe would can start to shift we, mentality. We, we, over the last few years after we implemented the change, uh, we've seen at least two projects yeah. that the project delays are significantly so we've already seen some results in that. But upholding this is really very, uh, uh, not that easy because there are always people who want to challenge, there are always people who want to rush yeah. into starting yeah. the project. We also actually, uh, uh, interesting enough, tying very much to what you have said, um, we used to only have one project release, which is after the uh, basic requirement. Yeah. Okay, after the basic requirement, then uh, maybe okay, sorry, maybe after the uh, the initial planning, then after basic requirement, based on requirement we do a full project planning. That's that come up with all the uh, cost time, uh, yeah. all this kind of thing, and uh, that build the business case where then the the management decide when to release the project or not. Okay. And the whole project 
once this is being released, it will be measured against these numbers. And in, uh, for many, many years, we already know that that is uh, extremely inaccurate because like what Alex is saying, the requirement at the time, basic requirement, it has not been translated into a specific specification how to do it, exactly how you want to do it. And um, a lot of time, by the time the specification is defined, you'll realize that the, the cost or the effort needed is even more than 100% higher than what you have predicted based yeah. on the basic requirement. Yeah. So now we actually put in a two-stage release. One is an initial stage, and then another stage is at number five that you're talking about here. Yeah. That whereby only after the detailed planning or detailed uh, specification is released, then we have a more accurate planning based on the what we exactly need to do. And this is a very drastic change to the management mindset to accept that. Because otherwise, they always hold you the first release as the measurement point, and sure. you will see the poor project manager always fail. Yep, absolutely. No matter, no matter how they how well they do, they will fail because of an inaccurate uh, requirement given to them. Uh, I'll come back to that. I want to ask you guys do more design construction type of work. Do you follow something like this? How about funding? Because to build on that question there, where do you approve your project? If you follow that, uh, a, well, I know you you do more of contracting, so your client will have to approve your project. But internally, do you do do you do one estimate or do you do more than one estimate? 